Back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Fabulous. Just change my name. Oh, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who the other woman was. <laughs> yeah, she's the lady that does my looks after my Twitter for me at the moment. All right, cool. Um, okay, so we are two participants. Shit, how do I go live? More live, right. Should we just do it? I'll do it. I'll go on live. I'll set it up. Yeah. Don't know how long it'll take to go live. It says broadcast Zoom webinar to Facebook Live. Show on your page on the Celebrant directory. Live with Michelle Taylor on the Celebrant directory. I'm going to go live, yeah? Shall I press it? <laughs> <laughs> One more minute. 50, <laughs> do, it, do it at 59, it's 58. Okay. Breathe. Got sweat arm. Take a drink. <coughs> Don't choke. It's 59. All right, I'm doing it. Go for it. Just hope it works. Hope one of the dogs is joining me now. <laughs> it's preparing the live stream to webinar. Setting up your webinar. Oh, it's on Facebook. Webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. Are we there? It's saying not on mine. It's saying webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. Oh yeah, it says that on mine. <laughs> cool, I'm excited. <laughs> Right, so we have to wait for some attendees. Uh, I can see that we are live. I guess I need to... I'm scared about moving this out of the way to see my Facebook, because I don't want to lose that. Right, we've got some, some attendees. Oh, now I've lost it. I'm gone. Move that over. Hi, everyone. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Lynn. Lovely to see you here. I'm going to give it a few minutes before we begin. Just let's see who's going to be joining us today. This is very exciting. Oh, wow. Doesn't that look awesome on Facebook? <laughs> Who else is going to join us today? Let's see. Minimise that page and move it over a bit. <laughs> Lynn says she's trying not to speak to the sick screen. She forgot that we can't see her. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lynn. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Lynn. Right, we'll just wait a few, a few more minutes. See who comes along to join us. Louise is here. Hi, Katie. Hello. <laughs> this is so weird seeing us on one, well, two screens. One is stalling because it's not quite live and the other one's completely live. It's weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's, cool. yeah it's really cool. Hello. Hi. Oh, there's Sharon. Hi, Hi Sharon. Sharon. Hi, Janita. Lovely to have you all here. Well, we'll get started anyway, because we are now at one minute past eight. Um, I want to say a big thank you to everyone for joining us today. Um, I'm gonna look forward to having some more people come along as we go. Um, I'm Jennifer, as most of you know, I'm the founder of the Celebrant Directory. Um, we launched, as most of you know out there, a month ago. Um, we've had an amazing response to the directory. We set it up uh, primarily as a place for celebrants to have a dedicated resource to advertise and market themselves with some really lovely looking um, profiles, reviews, videos, images, 
and also a place for couples and families to go to to find their perfect celebrant. A dedicated location that's full of ideas, inspiration, and um, part of the directory is uh, a place for people to go to to find out about celebrants, to find out about what we do, um, how we do the things that we do for ceremonies, how we put them together, and what the restrictions are, what you can actually do with a celebrant. And um, there aren't any restrictions, are there, Michelle? No. <laughs> uh, so I've been a celebrant for seven years, um, and I love what I do. I'm passionate, and most of the celebrants out there, if not all celebrants, are just as passionate as myself about the work that we do, because it's exciting, it's amazing, and we love it. So, today is our very first Facebook Live interview. And um, this will be taking place every month from the last Thursday of every month with a real life celebrant. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm alive. <laughs> and today our celebrant is the amazingly wonderful Michelle Taylor. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, so, should we begin? Michelle, would you like to introduce yourself? Let us know um, how long you've been in the business for, what you were doing before, um, and what you love about it. Yeah, hi everybody again. Um, so, as Jen says, I'm Michelle. I've been a celebrant for just over six years now, um, having trained with the FPC in 2011 under the lovely Terry Shanks. Um, for the first four years, I was part time because I was a serving police officer um, and I retired from that role exactly two years ago. So, the last two years, I've been completely full time as a celebrant. And I only do weddings and the family stuff, but it is just the best job in the world. I've gone from dealing with anything you can imagine in the police force to going to people's weddings every weekend. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and I, just, I just love, as Jen says, I'm just so passionate. I just love celebrating love in all of its glory. And I can't think of a better job in the world. Yeah, here, here. I'm sure we all, all celebrants out there agree. Um, so we're going to dive into some questions, some yep. interview questions, um, and if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to ask um, using the, the feed, um, and we will get to those questions. So we'll start off with, um, what is your very, very favourite, or your favourite part of a ceremony? <laughs> All the different elements you've got, you've got the kiss, you've got the readings, the poems, or you've got the vows, what is your favourite part? For me, that's very easy to answer. My favourite part is the first look. I love it. Um, before I actually start the ceremony, I always go out and see my bride and make sure that she's calm and she's breathing and she's ready to go. <clears throat> and I start my ceremony by, before I start my housekeeping, I'm walking back up the aisle, looking directly at the groom and all of my um, guests and saying, I love what I do. The best part for me is... I get to see the bride before everybody else does. Nobody's like, oh, where is she, where is she? And then just watching the groom's face as his bride to be, his wife to be enters the room. I've had tears, I've had grins bigger than a Cheshire cat. It's just absolutely amazing. And watching the little bridesmaids come in and the flower girls and things like that and all the little things that they do. And it's, if I'm gonna cry, it'd be that part of the ceremony because I'm just looking at their reactions and it's like, <gasps> breathe. <laughs> but so like, yeah, completely my favourite part. It's amazing that that is the first, that's the part that you don't even do, right? Yeah. You, you stand yeah. there, but that is your favourite part, even yeah. though you're not actually yeah. working. Well, you are working, but yeah. you're not actually reading anything yeah. at that point. Yeah. But I have started working because I, I, I'm getting the crowd going. Yeah. I've said, I've seen the bride. Yeah. Wait till you see her. She's absolutely amazing. So I've started the anticipation and the build up, and it's the way that I do it. Everybody is really excited. Well, what's going to come next then? Because we've never had anybody say that to us. Yeah. What's going to come next? Boom, we're in. What happens with first looks um, when they're same sex couples? Is it a similar thing, or um, do you find that same sex couples walk to the, down the aisle together? Yeah, the, the same sex couples that I've, I've had the privilege of um, conducting ceremonies for have tended to actually enter together. I haven't had anybody do the first look per se. Um, I think the closest I got was a couple of ladies earlier this summer. They'd actually seen each other before the ceremony and one was at the front waiting for her wife with her mother 
and the second lady entered with her mother and we did first kiss last kiss with those two so that's the closest I've got to the actual first look but they'd actually already seen each other and it was just yeah. eye contact from start to finish grinning yeah. as they walked towards each other so that was that was brilliant but most of my same-sex couples do actually tend to come in together so, there yeah, it's slightly different. Watching. yeah if there's any celebrants watching it'd be really interesting to hear your experiences so please comment yeah. your experiences with same-sex couples if there is any different variations that you've had yeah um brilliant um so what prep goes into your wedding what prep on the day itself goes into your weddings that start with on the day itself <clears throat> making sure i've actually got the ceremony with me is always a good one because i have made that mistake once where i was in such a tears having got the book out to read it just before i left the house and i got to the venue luckily only half an hour away to say where's my book <laughs> and my oh. son brought it with me so my prep on the day is to make sure that everything is charged i have all of the equipment that i require and i'm there in plenty of time so yeah. and when i actually get there i then do some more prep once i'm actually there but making sure that i'm ready i'm calm nothing's going to distract me from what i actually need to do in in you know the next few hours yeah. so and part of my prep for my day it's quite an interesting one um some ladies and gents like to have the hair done before we make sure they've got the hair cut for me it's having my nails done if my nails aren't done i feel naked so as long as my nails done i'm ready to rock and roll are they done now <laughs> yeah oh yes they're done now <laughs> especially for the interview <laughs> yes <laughs> and prior to that um prior to that so there's obviously a huge amount that goes into to being a celebrant and to offering celebrant services to couples starts all the way from the beginning from a consultation all the yep. way up to that actual arrival on the day yeah in general what kind of prep do you do from initial consultation through to the day very very first thing for me is listen tell me what you have planned for your ceremony and your day yeah okay tell me where i fit into that tell me how we're going to achieve this so I ask them some questions open questions I'm ex police officer I want to know why when why how and all that lot so it's always always the open questions but I want to listen to their story and I want to honor their story and the only way I can honor their story properly is knowing their story so yeah. that's the very first bit of prep that goes into it we all work completely differently um, I have a, a questionnaire that I fill in with them, so my initial consultation questionnaire to make sure I've got all those bits down that I need. So we're talking for an hour and a half, two hours, and then I will leave them with a fuller questionnaire, which will ask all of my police head officer questions. Um, I want to know all the facts. Not convictions, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that? You don't want to list their convictions, do you? I don't want to list their convictions, but I want to know everything. I'm so nosy. I want to know how they met, where they met, what the proposal was like. Because I want to know from their stories that they're telling me, what can I turn into part of their ceremony story? You don't want to know every single little thing to turn into the ceremony, but I, you know, yeah. everybody does picks out the relevant bits that they think are going to be funny or quirky or, or whatever. And for me, it's normally how they met what the first date was like some people are absolutely brilliant with their recall and can tell me exactly what they ate and where they went some people say oh we met some time we did this but i can't really remember mm -hmm. and the proposal especially if it's something really different or just really sweet um so it's it's all about getting that information from them and it's the best way of getting it some people don't do it by questionnaire but i find for me the couples actually enjoy sitting down together and going through it and the feedback I get from that is we actually really did enjoy that because it's made yeah. us talk to each other definitely and I find that you know with a another type of, of ceremony a registrar or maybe even a church you know that element there can be missed you know sitting down actually discussing what it is that you love about each other why yeah. you actually want to have a ceremony um, yeah. together why you're getting married you know yeah all those lovely things that you know sometimes I find that grooms are a bit like oh I'm not really sure about sharing my feelings but yeah. once they start to get into it they actually yeah. really enjoy it 
Yeah, and, and some of the groom stories actually are far better than the brides, but until they actually start the process, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> because yeah. of, why are we doing it like this? Well, I'm doing it because she wants me to do it, but they start talking and you yeah. get some really good yeah. things that get them, this is why we want to be together, this is why we're having the ceremony the way we want to have the ceremony. Yeah. So, that, so that that is all part of your prep. For yeah. me... I love to I love to have my face to face meetings or my Skype meetings. <clears throat> I have very few couples that actually book me from just a telephone call. Um, if they do, it's because they know they're going to book me or they've seen me in action. Um, but I I like to know that they get me and I get them. There's yeah. nothing worse than working with somebody just for the money and not actually getting their little quirks and them getting my little quirks. Anybody that works with me knows I am slightly unhinged <laughs> and the biggest harry potter fan and if i can get harry potter into a ceremony anywhere i will do it <laughs> <laughs> so in general how long does it take from initial consultation to getting a ceremony script over to the couple it obviously very much depends on how far in advance i'm booked i have got weddings booked into 2019 so um i booked a couple the other day who are getting married in july next year They've, they've got the the questionnaire. I've told them, you can start filling it in now, but I don't actually want it back till about April, May. Yeah. And then that's when I start the real big build-up of starting to write their ceremony and we'll exchange emails. We'll have another meeting. We'll then also book in when we're going to do the practice because to me that is very important to have the practice. And uh, I get intense with them for about two to three months before that, but... In the meantime, <clears throat> we'll have emails, we'll have phone calls, we'll have texts, um, and they always get the, they always get the obligatory Christmas card off me. Just say, "Hey, I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to your ceremony next year." Yeah. And I just the feel that little touch, touch. The personal yeah. touch is, yeah. is yeah. amazing, and that's what every celebrant brings to a ceremony. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's have a look at a couple of people who have joined and a couple of comments. So, Hiya. <laughs> hi everybody. Hi Ricky, Charlotte, um, lovely to see. You. Hi Samantha and Claudia and Belinda. And um, let's have a look at some of the comments. So. Face-to-face -face meetings, yeah, Charlotte agrees, definitely best part of the job, going to face-to-face -face meetings. Um, Claudia is saying that there is a new trend in the US for a bride and groom to do their first look. I have seen that, and there are first look photographers too that I have seen um, right. who do specific photography for those first looks. And I believe that it doesn't just necessarily have to be just before the ceremony, it can be um, in private. Um, the day before or something like that, um, yeah. which makes it quite interesting. Um, it does make the walk down the aisle less dramatic, yes. Um, I, I agree, I mean, it's, a, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because that walk down the aisle, seeing the groom or your partner, whoever you're marrying um, at the time, or having a wedding ceremony with, um, it's that point, isn't it, when they turn around and they see you, that first look, but it's in front of everybody else. So yeah. it's, that, it's that getting balance or, or whatever you, you think is is um suits you and that's what it's all about isn't it suiting your Absolutely. style yeah um samantha kelsey what did you say oh good evening and forgetting your script or even having the wrong one yes oh, not <laughs> of a celebrant having the wrong one <laughs> um sharon is asking can you tell us how you got your first wedding and what it was like so sharon's used to funerals but has only done her wedding training um, so what's it like for a celebrant when you have your first ceremony? Because obviously, do you tell, you know, do you go to couples and say, right, this is the first one? Or do you just go into it? Because obviously all of us as celebrants have either yeah. done training or have a background in public speaking, creative writing. So how do you approach your first meet, your first wedding? So my very first ceremony happened to be a vow renewal. Um, and it happened exactly 12 months after I'd done my training. I was getting a bit disillusioned thinking I'm never going to get any work, but I was all right because I had obviously my police work to fall back on. <clears throat> and this, this lovely couple who I'm still friends with now <laughs> um, booked me for the vow renewal. They didn't know, well, they, they might have guessed it was my first one, but I didn't tell them. Yeah. Um, what I did do was charge them less. Um, they didn't, they didn't know how much I should have been charging or whatever, but I, t I charged them about half what I, subsequently started charging the, uh, later that year yeah 
for my own peace of mind in case I made a complete mess of it. Um, so the first, I think the first two ceremonies I offered at very much a cheaper rate um, until I got my confidence. Um, but I've evolved over the last, you know, say certainly six years with the way I approach my ceremonies, the questionnaires, my contracts are completely, completely different to what they were six years ago because I've learned from other people's mistakes um, and some of the horror stories in just the wedding industry, full stop. Make sure you dot the I's and cross the T's as much as you possibly can. So yes, the first one is very, very scary. I've never done a funeral. I'm not funeral trained. Um, I would equate somebody that's just done funerals to going into weddings if I tried to go and do a funeral I'd, I wouldn't have a clue what I was doing but I'm not trained so I couldn't blag my way through it but if you are used to public speaking it doesn't matter whether it's on the you know on the funeral side or the wedding or the family side I think you can actually put the persona on as like you are you are a swan <laughs> Not paddling, but you're you're completely calm on the surface if you can deal with yeah. the public on a funeral you can deal with the public at a wedding i think yeah. it, and it's it's an emotional scenario again but i think it's a much nicer yeah. emotional scenario than a funeral um, and i think what it is is it's meeting that couple before getting to know them you know having that relationship with them so when you turn up to officiate that wedding you know them already so you're comfortable yeah. with them yeah and you're friendly with them you know i did see a quote on instagram on another celebrant's page saying you know and, and it was a testimonial from a couple saying i just got had my wedding officiated by a friend yeah. you know, they weren't a friend before but they are yeah. a friend now because they've gone through that journey with them that wedding yeah. journey um which you know which is the most amazing part of being a celebrant yeah absolutely absolutely agree yeah. so you don't always get that relationship with a grieving family but you certainly are able to build a relationship with the wedding or, or the family side because the relationship tends to be a lot longer over you know, say a longer period of time oh, yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense yeah um so let's start with rehearsals so it's quite interesting that um 17 celebrant services just asked about a rehearsal um yeah. that was one of the next questions i was going to ask you do you do rehearsals for couples do you charge a fee for rehearsal what happens during the rehearsals um, right, so rehearsals, um, I do rehearsals for weddings and commitment ceremonies and I charge accordingly. I don't do rehearsals for anything else. So if it's a flower renewal, a naming ceremony or anything else, there's no rehearsals. So they are cheaper than a wedding or a commitment ceremony. The same amount of work goes into developing the ceremony, but neither the couples or the families or I feel that we need to actually you know, how do you rehearse a baby name you never know what the baby's going to do <laughs> <laughs> um but you know and, and the vow renewals the couples have been married before if they're local local I'll still go and have a look at the venue with them and we'll have a chat and say well we're going to be in this room or we're going to be standing here and doing this that and the other but I don't do a rehearsal as I would do for a wedding I think the nerves at a wedding and a commitment ceremony are probably far more than they would be with the naming or a vow renewal because vow renewals the couples yeah. have normally gone through it before. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, true. Um, do you do rehearsals a lot for weddings? Is it required? You know, every single that? wedding. Every single, every single wedding. Yeah, I do every single wedding. Um, the furthest, furthest afield I've personally been to date is London. Um, and you know, I still went the day before and did the rehearsal, and it was the far side of London for me because I'm in Essex, so you know, we're talking two and a half, three hours away. Um, and I just stopped in a hotel close by. Um, are there any other they, they pay for the hotel? <laughs> are there any other celebrants out there that do rehearsals? Because I find the majority of the time on for my celebrant services, I don't really do many rehearsals. Um, I find that I would go and see the bride in the morning, go and see the groom as well once I get there. Or, you know, same sex couples, same thing. Um, and just go and meet both of them and talk them through, you know, what side of the aisle to walk down, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but I find the majority of the time I don't do rehearsals. That's not through choices. Well, that's through the couple's choice. Um, mm. Louisa, yeah, always, always do do rehearsals. Elizabeth, yeah, always does a rehearsal for her weddings. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great to see. And I've also seen a really lovely point from Lynn who says she finds she gets separation anxiety after finishing yeah. the ceremony. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that, especially with the ones that you have really, really bonded with. And, and they become friends on Facebook. And it's, it's lovely to see where their lives are going. And every single one of them that knows my Harry Potter obsession, which is 99 and a half percent of my couples, they keep pinning me in Harry Potter posts, saw this and thought of you. And it's like, OK, is that obvious? Then? <laughs> Amazing. They, know, oh, they know they can just get away with it. <laughs> Claudia rehearsals is a must, yeah, especially if it's a big party. I agree, uh, Charlotte, if there's some symbolic elements in there, especially things like hand passings or unity candles. People, you know, couples may not have seen it before, but they really love the idea and they love it included in their ceremony. But if you haven't rehearsed it before, um, I think especially hand passings, if you don't rehearse it, you, you know, it could be a little awkward there at the front. Um, Katie, yeah, she's done rehearsals in the past but now only include in-person rehearsals on Friday of the Friday and Saturday weddings um that's great uh I had my first couple had a baby last week it's lovely yeah. excitement that's another amazing thing about being a celebrant is it doesn't just stop at weddings you know no. go through to baby names that relationship starts with a baby naming or a wedding or whatever way around couples do it and families do it but it starts from something and moves and can progress into a lovely go forward going forward relationship do you find yeah. that yeah? yeah absolutely yeah i mean i did a i did a naming ceremony um the other week forgive me if they are actually watching this but i'm trying to persuade them to get married <laughs> <laughs> i do do i do do weddings as well you know yeah yeah, yeah we know so <laughs> you know where i am <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah. Um, so on the day itself, uh, what time do you typically arrive um, at the venue? I always aim to be there at least an hour before the ceremony. <clears throat> um, depending on where the ceremony is, sometimes it will be even earlier than that. If it's anybody that knows Essex and knows the A12 knows that it's 99% of the time at gridlock. So I'm always going to be yeah. there at least an hour and a half, two hours before. So yeah. I know I've got there. And then that gives me time to just find my my zen my inner zone and check on any last minute issues make sure i've got my right bolt the right folder <laughs> um and calm the groom down go and have a chat with the bride and the bridesmaids um and just meet the families because albeit i might have done the practice the day before not necessarily met other members of the family so it just gives me time just to say hi to people mill around a bit get a quick drink set up my table and talk to the photographer if they haven't been at the practice the videographer any other supplier that hasn't been at the practice and just say right okay let's rock and roll we're ready to go so yeah do you ensure that the music's set up or is that something usually the venue deals with do you take any equipment with you like a piano yes system? i would say probably about 85 to 90 percent of the time it's me providing the music so i put the the couple's choices onto my ipod i always take um uh, even if the venue provided music because i have had one venue where everything collapsed and gave up and luckily i had the backup of having my own portable amp um so i always have that with me i've got my ipod with me sometimes staff at the venue will control the music for me sometimes i get one of the ushers or a trusted member of the, the the family also not the family but a trusted member of the wedding party to be in control of the music for me um and then i, I always say to them and the couple says well then if it goes wrong i can blame them you can't blame me and everybody just finds that quite funny the way i say it as well um but it it works it works for me rather than trying to find that I'm looking at my book and then trying to sort my music out as well. It flows much nicer if I've got a third party party do, doing it for me. And it tends to be the venue, to be fair, most of the yeah, time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have mics, um, battery operated, mains operated if required. I've only really, really started to use them a lot this year because my weddings have started to get bigger um, yeah. and more outdoors well I, mean, well I say most of them are outdoors anyway but i think the, the attendance is getting bigger and the distance as well has, has changed between where we're standing and where everybody else is standing so i am finding that i'm using my mics more and more this year mm -hmm. but I, you know i've gone for four and a half years with hardly ever using them yeah yeah no i would agree i would agree mm -hmm. sometimes uh, having a handheld mic kind yeah. of hinders holding everything as well yeah, yeah. Take your own PA system or a clip yeah. mic 
the yeah, I've got the clip. I've got the yeah. the Madonna one. I've I find I find the clip is better than the Madonna one because the Madonna one's always slipping, especially if my hair's like this. It's like, okay, how do I put it? <laughs> Let's have a look at a couple of the comments. So yeah, one hour before, Lou says, uh, Samantha, one hour before, time to change, breathe, rehearse. Yeah, change, yeah. especially if it's a long journey yeah. and you've got your outfit on, um, you don't want any creases or anything like that. Yeah. Um, totally agree with getting someone else to do the music. Charlotte says, too many things to go on, too many things to focus on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And usually each venue, they will look after the music for you. But it's, I think a celebrant's role is just to make sure that they've got the right choices at the right times and make sure they know when to press the button and when to give them the cue yeah. the button mm -hmm. at the end. Because mm -hmm. there have been many a ceremony that I've attended when you, you're giving them the cue and they're kind of too busy. Yeah, they're looking the other way and I'm, I'm standing there going, <laughs> This Hi. Look Hi. at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Claudia, other wedding professionals sometimes seem surprised when I arrive one to two hours early. They like they've worked with celebrants who run, you know, 230 minutes before the ceremony. Mm. Um, I'm, I always arrive early too. I think majority of celebrants arrive at least an hour before. Um, that's another benefit of having a celebrant-led ceremony is because we are there. We are then there to make sure every element of your ceremony is um, sorted, is ready. You know, yeah. we are there then at the front when you're ready to walk down. And you know that we're there, you know who we are, you've met us before, um, yeah. and you know that we're going to, you know, do a ceremony that suits your personality and style. Um, yeah. I've had couples f forget things, like they've, f they've, f they've um, left the candles at home or they've forgotten an important piece of whatever for the wedding that they're supposed to be bringing and and i now my 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 wedding kit now fills the boot so <laughs> everything from literally I've, from, got just bag carry yeah, around with you. I've got i've got two big boxes plastic boxes full of kit from candles through to a needle and thread one wedding i did um they were doing hand fasting and they'd literally gone and got three spools of ribbon and yeah. went, here you go, here's the ribbon. I was like, okay, I've got scissors in the car. I'm all yeah. right. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm, I think I've covered touch wood most eventualities. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, be prepared. That's what it's all yeah. about too. Um, yeah. We take control of the ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, we, are, we are the ones that have to take control of it because they're too nervous. So yeah. we, are, we are, like I say, the swan, we might be panicking a bit, thinking, oh, with our feet going, but... They're never going to know that. No, no. So, Belinda, sandwiches for the groom? Great idea. <laughs> Sharon. Yes, because they never eat. I, I, I have bought the groom. Oh, I've, I've, I've done it twice. I've bought the groom a sandwich once because he hadn't eaten. And the bride and her bridesmaids, I bought them all food because they hadn't eaten. And I said, well, I'm hungry. I'm buying a sandwich. I'm buying you one as well. Yeah, yeah, you do forget on your wedding day to eat yeah. and drink, yeah. unless it's Prosecco, obviously, in the morning. Not for the celebrant, obviously, for the bride. <laughs> um, Lynn, perhaps we could get put together a ceremony kit list. Yeah, great idea, why not? Let's yeah. put something together. It's endless. <laughs> we can start you off. <laughs> yeah, definitely, that's a great idea. Kirsty yeah. is actually my sister. Yes, one day you will get married and I will be your celebrant. No, she won't. I'll do it. All right, oh, we Harry Potter theme. <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey for the groom, Lou. Yeah, <laughs> I helped to finish a bottle for him. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. We a wedding that I did last week. Uh, I usually, you know, need a need a little soft drink after a ceremony, yeah. and they didn't have any soft drinks. They only had cider or prosecco. So. Yeah. Obviously, I should. <laughs> We're talking about that. Um, yeah. Talking about after the ceremony. Um, what actually happens with the celebrant? Do you stay on after the ceremony? Do you celebrate with the couple? Um, what's what's kind of the typical thing? I know in the US and Australia, it's very typical for people to be for celebrants and officiants to be invited to the after party. Yeah. Is that something that we do here in the UK? It's very dependent on the couple and who I'm working with. Because my husband's a wedding photographer. If we are working together, 
I finish the ceremony and I then become his voice activated light stand. He loves it. I'm not so sure. But what that does enable me to do is to actually stay and enjoy the part. Well, I say enjoy the party. I'm still working. But I get to see what's happening when yeah. the groom and the bride are relaxed and the family's relaxed. And that's when I get a lot of feedback from, from the guests. Or, you know, you've never seen one like that before. Oh, my God, how do you do this job? give me your card I want to do it I'm thinking no 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 you live too close but yeah so you, you get to you get to have uh, uh, and there was another there was one that we did together in the summer which was the most perfect quintessential summer you know um, English evening when I was marrying a Scotsman to a Welsh woman but it was absolutely perfect and they had me up doing the Cayley um, and it was absolutely fantastic um, so sometimes I do get to stay and celebrate it, it tends to be either when I've done ceremonies for actual friends, people I've known for years and years and years, or if I'm staying to help my husband, most of the time I'll mill around for an hour, hour you know, up to an hour, especially if they want to carry on to use my um, portable amp to play some music through because we're outdoors and they haven't got anything till the band comes on later. I'm stand up, staying to have a drink. I very, very rarely rush off. There's only been a couple of times when I have had to rush off. But that is that's not normal, and that's because so something else has been going on. Mm. Typically, do you book one ceremony a day, or do you have a couple of ceremonies a day? What's kind of your typical? T typically, it is only one ceremony a day, but occasionally, if the stars align and they are very close in distance and quite far apart in time, I will do more than one ceremony. But I always try and plan it that I still get that hour with yeah. my couples so yeah. i'm still not rushing off i mean there has been a couple of occasions when i have had to go but that has been other things going on in life that we've been running late and i'm thinking i really just need to go but yeah. you know that's that that that's life getting in the way rather than somebody else's wedding <laughs> and a huge another huge benefit of having a celebrant is that we give the flexibility to couples so that's yeah there is any reason why they are late or delayed, you know, the head and go right even, or, you know, if it's drizzly outside and they want to wait half an hour because they would still like their wedding outside, yeah. it means that you can have that flexibility because you would have already agreed that with the couple and yeah. they would yeah. also be yeah. comfortable enough to be able to ask you because they know you. Yeah, it happened um, earlier this year, actually. Um, I don't know if Glenn, Glenn Mays is on, on, on here or not, but he was Toastmaster because he's also a Toastmaster and I was celebrant and the ceremony should have started at two o'clock. Literally just as the bride was ready to come out, the heavens opened, but they were also doing the legals that day and it was getting closer and closer to the time when they had to go off and do the legal ceremony. And I just went, forget me, go and do the legals. I'll still be here. Yeah, and you, you, you know, and, and I, I stayed, and we didn't get going till about four o'clock, so I didn't have anything, any anywhere else to go that day. There was other stuff going on, but I'm thinking, it doesn't bother me what time I leave here. Yeah, sure. I know the the registrar hasn't got that flexibility, but I have, so they still got a slightly different ceremony because we ended up having to do it indoors, so it became a bit hasty, but you know, it's thinking on your feet, and I had the flexibility, because I didn't have to rush off, that yeah, you can have, you can have an extra two hours of my time. Yeah. It, it's no skin off my nose, and like you said, that is the beauty of using a celebrant. Any celebrants out there, what's the longest you've had to wait for a couple, um, and what's the longest that you're happy to wait for a couple? As Michelle pointed out, you know, four or five hours right is that four or five hours before for a couple um yeah no yeah. no a couple of hours a couple of hours yeah yeah a couple of hours yeah let's yeah. have a look at a couple of questions or the comments so i hang around till comfortable grab a photo with the bride and groom twice lynn has been asked to stay for the meal yeah Lovely. bonus um, Louisa, to be fair, i um, been invited to quite a few of the weddings I've done this year. It varies, sometimes for the meal or sometimes for the evening. Depends what relationship you have, which is yeah. another amazing benefit of being a celebrant. But, you know, what we said before, all about having that relationship and becoming, you know, part of their wedding. Mm -hmm. um, Joy, my first wedding, June 2018. I presumed I had to provide all of the symbolic things. Do you ask your bridal? Uh, people to provide those things. Do you ask the couples to provide their elements? 
Yeah, I provide nothing because I don't want to get it wrong. I tell them where I've sourced things. I mean, I, I obviously have things that I can show them and I tell them where I source them from. Um, but so that I don't get get it wrong and for them to turn around and say, oh, no, we're not paying you. You want you've decided what symbolic elements you want. Yeah, you, you go and source it. I will have a backup candle. I will have my backup hand fasting cords. Might not be the colours that they want, but I've got my backup. But no, I don't. I personally don't provide anything. I know other people do, and they will charge accordingly. But I don't want to go down that route. Do you print up the readings and the vows and things? Yes. Yes, yeah. Uh, the readings are printed, the vows are printed, um, their copies printed, and I, I bind it and put it in a nice presentation box. Um, and then obviously I've got, I use a folder, I don't trust electronics. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be using a Kindle or an iPad and for that to fail. So I like paper yeah. and I print it in such a way that it's double uh, 16 font, double space, colour coded. Yeah. And I, that that's my safety net i'm happy <laughs> yeah sure and we did have a discussion on a celebrant forum not long ago about the use of um paper versus electronic um, and it was quite interesting that, that i think there was a majority of people who still use you know the traditional paper and folder but a huge amount of people that uh, a huge amount of celebrants that go along now with their tablets or their ipads and yeah. officiate yeah. ceremonies and i see a huge amount now on Instagram of Australian celebrants and American celebrants using tablets. So it's definitely um, the way to go forward. But I think the majority of celebrants would agree with me that if they do use tablets, then they always have their backup. Copy Paper well. backup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have, I have the tablet as the backup, um, well, or my phone as the backup because I, I, just, I save everything into the cloud. So if I ever did do the faux pas of not having my folder again, I know I've still got the ceremony printed out. Yeah. on my phone yeah it'd be very small but yeah. i do have a backup copy <laughs> yeah, for sure yeah. um so big question for you um yeah. which is hi gaina she's arrived um hi. Samantha <laughs> says uh, in her contract she says that uh, they must provide their own keep tape materials um yeah. Yeah, weddings in the US are different. Couples don't meet their registrar for the legal bits. Uh, Claudia says, most weddings are pretty tightly scheduled with the photographer caterers. I've only had to wait when it's a small wedding. So yeah. It's be interesting to get the perspective as well. So thanks, Claudia, of US weddings, Australian weddings, you know, weddings all over the world are completely yeah. different. But um, we all are together as celebrants and officiants. Um, so it's great to hear different perspectives. But my big question for you, Michelle, is... Yeah. Whether you can answer this or not, I don't know. But okay. what is a typical ceremony like? No, Are there typical ceremonies? There isn't such a thing. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I, I do follow a, a format which works for me. Um, obviously, for the housekeeping introductions and, and symbolic elements, but there is no such thing as a typical ceremony because you don't know what's going to happen. Mm. at any given moment so I think you've got to prepare for every eventuality within your prep um, typically um, a ceremony for me lasts anywhere between 20 minutes and half an hour I have had much shorter ones and I have had I say much longer 40 minutes um, so th those are those are the typicals other typicals are there's a ring exchange and there's a vow exchange sometimes two rings sometimes one ring 95 percent of the time probably two rings though th those again are typicals yeah but obviously everybody's story is different everybody's story is unique the readings oh, i will get some some readings the same i will get some music the same but that's that's quite rare um so, so you know we'll have some readings we'll have some music we'll have live music we'll have recorded music the symbolic elements are always going to be different the order of the symbolic elements will be different so i don't think you can say there is a stereotypical ceremony unless you're cutting and pasting and doing the same ceremony for everybody and i don't know many celebrants worth their salt that do but well, i know no celebrants worth their salt that do that yeah. so <laughs> we That's are writing it's all about yeah. the basic premise of a celebrant yeah. is to offer personalized unique ceremonies yeah. Yeah. Every ceremony is different. Yeah. Um, 
even if it's in the same hotel or in the same venue, you know, that ceremony will be unique to that couple, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got typical elements, you've got similar elements, but I don't think you can ever say what's a typical ceremony, personally. Um, talking about length of ceremony, I know um, Louisa had a ceremony recently. Um, so now, wasn't it, though? <laughs> was it 10 symbolic? Um, elements to that ceremony be interesting if you can comment below um, Lou and let us know um, mm. how many it was and how long it actually lasted because it's yes. a really interesting story but again I think that's quite unique I think most yeah. people stick to one or two symbolic additions so yeah. a hand fasting or a unity candle or a sand ceremony some of these things that we might discuss in more detail in future yeah. five meetings but yeah. um, in general it's you know 25 minutes half an hour ceremony yeah. Yeah. one symbolic or, or nothing at all some couples don't even like to have readings or poems they like yeah. these straight simple services but would yeah. still like a celebrant the, the personal it's, it's the telling the story is yeah. the bit that really really personalizes it and i always say to them the more information you give me the more i can say yeah and when i feel they haven't given me enough information when i send their first draft back i've got red written on it <laughs> like a school teacher i say i want more information about this bit because i this is really interesting part of your story i want to expand on it mm -hmm. if you don't want me to expand on it fine tell me that you don't want me to but i think this will this will grab your guests they yeah. might have heard it but they haven't heard my take on it yeah for sure for sure yeah. and it's lovely with um it's lovely when there are a few uh, funny things to add into a ceremony and um, I always find myself when I do ceremonies that if there's um, some nice humour in there it really makes the atmosphere yeah, feel lovely and everybody yeah. enjoys the ceremony they listen to the words they want to know more about that couple and about absolutely. their experience yeah. um, rather than having something quite formal um, yeah. where often people can maybe drift off a little bit so that's again one of the major benefits of having a celebrant is all that personalization and kind yeah. of getting the couple hmm. i always get... warn my couples there will be some ad libbing i just says i don't know where it's going to come but something yeah. will suddenly come to me halfway through your ceremony and i'm going to say it yeah, sure. <laughs> they sometimes let my math run away but <laughs> yeah it, th th that's th that's the beauty they're, they're pre-warned when they've met me that they know there's going to be something <laughs> and that's the beauty of it yeah. so, what's yeah. louisa say one and a half hours one and a half hours for a wedding ceremony wow yeah. But there, are so many, there were so many elements in yeah. that ceremony. So 10 symbolic ceremonies, um, plus a few extras, as well as blending it together with their story and vows. Um, Katie Keane says she's had an hour plus long wedding this summer with yeah. five readings, including the father of the groom's speech, which went on for a good 10 minutes in 30 degree heat. Wow, amazing. Well, I think um, the, the most readings I've had, um, the bride wanted to put eight readings in. And this is fine. Who's reading them? You are. Okay, can we cut that down then? Because otherwise I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> she went, oh yeah, fair enough. So I, I got her down to five. Yeah. And I've had another one where I've had five readings. And it was, um, everybody was being read by a different person. And that one was absolutely amazing because the, we had one to literally open the ceremony and one to close the ceremony which i've never done before before even me yeah. do my introductions we had one to open the ceremony Lovely. and it was perfect because the two poems just topped and tailed the ceremony perfectly mm. and it's like, i like that yeah you know so sometimes i'll suggest things they'll suggest things we meet in the middle and it just creates magic it's brilliant <laughs> So to wrap things up, tell me how you end a ceremony. So what happens at the end of a ceremony? Do you do celebrants still do certificate signings? Do you do presentation copies? Is there any kind of rituals you go through at the end of every ceremony? Uh, I tend to, not all my couples want the certificate. Some say, no, we're quite happy we've done the legal certificate. Other people do want it. I would say I'm uh, probably, probably about 50-50 wanting it, not wanting it. I don't tend to do my certificates at the end. I don't know where other people put them in. I'll do my certificate after the ring and the vows. Okay. Or the vows and the rings, whichever way around I'm doing it. And then I'll do the certificate there. And then I, I close with my symbolic element and my, you know, my, my closing speech. And the very last thing, if we're, if we're doing a broom jump, that's the last thing before they kiss and walk down the aisle. Um, if we're not doing a broom jump, I, I, I close with what other 
symbolic element and the introduction of the happy couple, Mr. and Mrs., Mr. and Mr., what, you know, whatever they want to be called, I will introduce them as that. And I have sworn before <laughs> because that's what they wanted me to say. And I went, are you sure? And they went, yes, we are. And I went, okay. And I did warn everybody, I'm about to swear, but I've got to go with it because this is what they want me to do. And I did it. Um, Amazing. So I will introduce them as to what they want to be introduced as. Yeah. Uh, so let's say my certificate signing comes earlier in the ceremony if I'm going to do it. The very last thing for me is sharing the kiss, walking back down the aisle, everybody up clapping, singing, shouting, dancing, whatever we decide we're, we're going to end it with. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's have a look. Any more comments? Um, so what were the 10 elements Sharon's asking and Louise is sharing? Um, lovely to have you all here tonight. Um, it is now 10 to 9 and I think we should wrap it up. Uh, it's been an amazing interview. Thank you so much Michelle for being here with us and for sharing all of your experiences as an amazing celebrant. Thank you. And I hope you all join again next month for our next Facebook Live. This live recording will be shared on Facebook to be viewed again. Um, and we will see you again next month. If you have any other questions, still pop them on um, and we will reply. Michelle and I can be on there um, replying to your questions, celebrants or couples. Um, please ask away. Yeah, I did notice a question earlier on, which I know we need to reply to, but I can't remember what the, reply, what the question was. So we'll scroll through that and, and reply later. <laughs> yeah. We'll reply yeah. to them later. Um, yeah. And um, we hope to see you all next week. Have a and lovely then, evening. Don't everybody. forget Celebrant Hour on Twitter. Don't forget to join us, Celebrant <laughs> Hour, all about networking for the celebrants out there. Um, it will be, uh, it's a fantastic networking chit chat event on Twitter. Um, so yeah, brilliant. We will see you next time. Um, and thanks again, Michelle. Okay, thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>